video games are already exciting to play, but they're more exciting when the game features an announcer who lets you know when you've performed a sick multi-kill or lethal combo or acquired boost power. Thanks for the heads up! Many games feature these hype pronouncements, but there are some in-game announcers who really go the extra mile, whether it's with memorable delivery, meme-worthy lines, or just a determination to be announcing over every single second of the game. Here we honour the best, most extra, most iconic in-game announcers that didn't need to go this hard, but did anyway. Legends. Some may say that it was luck that helped this team to best. That doesn't matter to me, because the bottom line is that this team won. They just better keep in mind that luck works in many mysterious ways. It's not too late. Are you giving up already? Does Capcom vs SNK2, Mark of the Millennium 2001, have the best announcer of any fighting game? Perhaps. Does it have the most announcer of any fighting game? Undoubtedly. This is the first dream event of the 21st century. If you choose the wrong groove, you may just lose. The winner of this tournament is the strongest team in the world. These fighters are as good as they come. Any team could win the tournament. Only a team with ability got great. I knew that groove was in the Millionaire Fighting 2001. This 2001 fighting game, as the title suggests, pits fighters from both Capcom and SNK games against each other, and is beloved by fans of the genre. Partly for its slick, visually engaging combat, but also, it must be said, for its frankly hilarious announcer. Listed in the credits simply as DJ, this is the vocal work of one Hiroaki Asai, who voices an unbelievably hyped announcer who absolutely cannot keep quiet for one single second. What an incredible cast! The Warriors has gathered here. However, only one team shall be crowned the champion of the Millionaire Fighting 2001. But the road to victory is not an easy one. The champion team will need more than luck to win this tournament. They will have to demonstrate a keen mind and steady nerves in order to defeat the competition. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Well, if you let me get a word in, DJ, we might find out. The DJ's verbose descriptions are present in both actual combat and the menus, bringing a chaotic but undoubtedly entertaining energy to the game, even the bits where you're just doing the settings. Oh man, are you ready for this? This tournament is held under the free ratio system. The whole thing gives the impression of an announcer who is simply so excited about seeing a fight that they've gone way off script, and the result is one of gaming's most entertaining and relentless performances. Let's get ready to battle! So we say cheers to you, the DJ, and Go for broke. sorry, can you just Live and me... let die. I'm trying to sing this your phrases here. Be a match to remember. You can feel the calm before Never the mind. storm. That's what we like to call big damage. Even if you're no good at first-person shooters, if you spend any time on the internet, you will have probably heard this voice. Double kill. Halo fans will recognise this as Halo multiplayer announcer Jeff Steitzer, fondly referred to by players as the Voice of God. His voice is ubiquitous in Halo's online matches and was so loved in Combat Evolved that they just kept adding more and more medals for him to read out. And oh boy did he deliver! Starting off with Halo 2, they put in a medal for achieving the mean feat of killing seven opponents within four seconds of each other. Do this and you would get... Kilimanjaro! Get it? Like the, the mountain? Then in Halo 3, they added a medal for killing 10 opponents within 4 seconds of each other. Do this and you'll be rewarded with Jeff's dulcet tone saying, Killionaire. <laughs> you gotta love someone committed to the pun. But puns weren't the only thing Jeff delivered well. In Halo Reach's multiplayer, they added a medal for those able to kill 40 enemies without dying once, for which they'd get, Unfriggin believable. And probably a lot of people never wanting to play with them again. But Jeff's perfect all-in and fun delivery takes what could be super cringeworthy lines and makes them instant classics. He's also embraced the Halo fandom, going above and beyond his Voice of God role for the fans. His joy for his work can clearly be heard in his vocals and has spurred on many a player, including me. Next kill wins. Sure, I'd been playing rubbish all round, but I'm gonna win it for my team and...
Yeah, I won it. Thanks to Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. The ultimate showdown is almost here, and I, the announcer, invite you to smash your rivals off the stage in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate! Smash Brothers is a very silly game where famous Nintendo characters like Link and Donkey Kong fight on platforms suspended in space, so it needs something to give it a sense of gravitas. Super Smash Brothers! Yay! That'll do it. The role of the Smash Brothers announcer has been played by several voice actors over the series history. What every delivery has in common, however, is a memorable, booming presence, heavily filtered to make everything sound like a heavyweight boxing match title fight. Versus Kirby! As opposed to what it is, which is a game where you can hit a Kirby so hard with a Pokeball that it dies. <laughs> Little is known about the in-universe identity of the announcer, besides his genuine enthusiasm for the concept of Smash Brothers. Although it's possible he's a disembodied glove, seeing as he usually shares a voice actor with the sinister recurring villain, Master Hand. Whether he's evil or not, the Smash announcer is beloved for his OTT delivery, and for the way he says Bowser Jr. like he's only just been introduced to the concept of a child Bowser and can't believe what a good idea it is. Bowser Jr. The announcer brings an undeniable energy to the Smash Brothers series and is adored for exactly that reason. Ultimately, pun intended, he's just a huge part of what makes these games because he really does know exactly what Smash Brothers is. Yeah. That's right, a game. I told you he gets it. Instinct is a perfectly normal fighting game where you can make a werewolf fight a dinosaur. Was this designed by an eight-year-old? Because I would like to shake that eight-year-old's hand. Like many other arcade games of its era, Killer Instinct had a cool voiceover dude to shout out when players were doing particularly well. And for the most part, these were fairly standard. <laughs> However, there were some that were a little heavier on the ears, popped in as a ploy to get the game noticed by new players in arcades, such as... Ultra Combo! Damn, why announcer dude? Are you doing this through a megaphone? In developer Rare's behind-the-scenes video making of Killer Instinct, Rare showed that this volume was partly due to the announcer Chris Sutherland's lung power. Just had a really powerful voice. They almost blew the mic, actually. Ultra combo! But game designer Ken Lobb revealed that the celebratory shout-outs for exciting moves were not only shouted out by a man with a vendetta against microphones, but also set at increasing volumes based on how difficult they were to execute. Chatting to fighting game YouTube channel Hold Back to Block, Lob said that they staggered the volume specifically so that when the arcade owner set up the machine, they'd set the volume at the right level for the base game, not realising until much later when people had mastered the bigger combos that some announcements could reach 40% louder than that. This was also people would walk into an arcade and go looking for the super loud game with lots of combos. Great for Killer Instinct, not so great if you were trying to play on the machine next to it. Combo Breaker! Ow! More like Eardrum Breaker! I, I said, more like Eardrum Breaker! Mission begins in 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Who doesn't love getting into the minute lore of a series? Like how only true Outside Extra fans know this chair's name is Robert, and the very specific vengeance he has planned for whoever burned down the chair factory where he was born. A series that has mined its own backstory enthusiastically for many years is Team Fortress 2, a squad-based shooter launched in 2007 with nine character classes, whose roles, lives, loves and employment have since been expounded in comedy skits, comics and game updates. 
the bomb is nearing the checkpoint. One of the first of Team Fortress 2's side characters to get a gigantic wiki page full of canonical backstory, however, was the announcer who delivers Tannoy updates on the game in progress. And no wonder when her icy acerbic delivery is a huge part of the game's charm. If you need more proof of the administrator's beloved status, however, consider that she's one of the very, very few video game announcers to actually be blessed with a visual design. Victory. A design that was revealed in 2009, although how you can draw up a character based purely on their voice, I do not know. Oh, oh no, no, oh no, they nailed it. Since then, the administrator has been portrayed as a sinister puppet master, manipulating the game's combatants to her own mysterious ends. Something we have to assume developer Valve wouldn't have bothered with if the administrator's echoing, impersonal proclamations weren't so damn good. The work of actor Ellen McLean, who you may also know as the voice of evil robot GLaDOS in Portal. And you thought you felt bad when GLaDOS was shaming you. You failed! Well, failed is a strong word. No, you're right. I'm terribly sorry. Battle one, fight! Most of the announcers in this list are here because of the enthusiasm or volume of their delivery. But the announcer from Soul Calibur 2 has a different kind of intensity. Yes, he calls out lots of things during the match, just like any other announcer, but going that extra mile, he also likes to give a detailed introduction of your opponent right before you face them. A solemn madness hones his blade. Oh, interesting stuff. Thanks, mate. This can be very useful. If you've never played the game before or met that particular character, the announcer might give you some interesting backstory. He lives only to fulfill his master's last wish. Or useful details about your opponent's weaponry and fighting style. Her graceful sword dance cuts through enemies. Oh, thanks. This is really going above and beyond. Now, tell me some good weaknesses about this next guy. His gentle eyes reveal a man of strong Okay, do you want me to fight him or get his number for you? Because I don't want to beat him up now, I know he has gentle eyes. NBA Jam is a famously good and fun basketball game. It looks great, plays even better, and maybe would have been just as popular without any in-game commentary at all. Harper. But thankfully, we'll never have to find out, because in our timeline, NBA Jam features the extremely memorable announcer, voiced by Tim Kitzrow, whose frequent interjections provide a constant backing track to the match being played out, and vital context for those of us who aren't entirely au fait with the rules of basketball. Ball through hoop equals good. Got it. Kitzrow's bombastic style is a perfect match for NBA Jam's cartoonish arcade aesthetic. Oh, Jam! So much so that the announcer's oft-repeated catchphrases have made a serious dent in both basketball and video game pop culture. Oh, As a measure of that impact, consider the presence of the He's on Fire cheat code in 2019 shooter Rage 2, which added Tim Kitzrow's iconic narration to the action unfolding on screen. You just sliced their head right off! Slice their heads right off equals good. See, this basketball thing's not so hard. Pippin! She sits in the chair ready to deliver the outro. So, the whole those world waits were to hear what some she of the amazing say. announcers that, you know, just went that extra mile. Um, if you can think of any others, let us know in the comments down she below. She wants to know your ideas and on the And if you enjoyed the video, press like and subscribe There's if you haven't already. There's lots of YouTube stuff that you need to do at home. Yes, and you can watch these now videos. Now she's talking about the other videos. And then you if you want to support us even further, you can join our Patreon and join our Discord and, uh, you know, send us cool questions. Patreon.com Another... slash OX Club is the URL that it you is. need to visit to find information on our Patreon. It is. So go there now. Bye!